Hello, my Astro family. This is Lada from astrolada.com, and today I'm here with my two friends and colleagues, uh, Zorina and Krasi. Hello, Zori and Krasi. Hello, everyone. Hello, Wada, Zori. Hi, Zori. Hi, guys. Hi, Lada's family. <laughs> Hi, Lada. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. We want to present to you something special. I know it's in the middle of a uh, pandemic, pandemic, whatever. But it is, uh, uh, we're going to do a retreat in Bulgaria this summer. Hopefully we'll all be able to be there. But it's going to be in August and we want to tell you a little bit about it. So can you tell us what have you planned for the retreat? Uh, we're hoping that the three of us are going to be there. If there are no restrictions for me to travel so far, there is none. It looks like it will be okay. We want to gather maybe a group of 15, 20 people and we're gonna, we want to do this, if possible, every year, but in different places every year. But can you tell us a little bit about... May I, may I start? May I start? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I want to tell you, Wada, actually, you know, we, uh, we were last, uh, last summer with Zori uh, in the mountains in Bulgaria, and we visited amazing, amazing sacred places. We didn't even imagine how wonderful this would be and when we visited these sacred places because you know in high in the mountains in Bulgaria you really have portals to other dimensions where you amazing places where people um, get rid of diseases when they people would visit a stone for example which is uh, very very ancient um, in, high in the mountains and after that after visiting the stone and the local people they would just go home completely healed so we visited such places and then we spoke that we need to organize something and we know how wonderful your previous retreat was so that's why we came up uh, with this um, idea these places need to be seen by more people. It was amazing. Our dream now we are speaking every day with Zori is to go again and visit the same places and show it to more people. Oh, this, I remember the retreat we did in 2019. Everyone said that the highlight of the retreat was when we went to the sacred place. We went for just yes. one. And people were crying. People were, it was incredible. They say something shifted in them and changed the direction of their life in those places. And uh, I need to go every year to one such place or else I'm, dry, I'm dr drained from energy. <laughs> and thankfully, whenever I can go in Bulgaria, I always stay for a few days around such places. Uh, and they're, they're, they're basically, they look like Stonehenge, but more ancient. They're made out, they're way more ancient. They're like a big, huge, they, they're so big formations of stones that... Um, and they're on top of mountains and they're known for thousands of years as sacred places where there were rituals being performed by thousands and thousands of generations over the ages. Uh, just, uh, yes, stones, they, 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 they place those stones on special ley lines or uh, whatever, yes. but uh, uh, from people going there and consecrating over thousands of years in prayers and the place becomes even more powerful. Zori, can you tell us a little bit about uh also you met a, a healer didn't you an old lady healer who we're going to visit all of us uh, actually both krasi and i met the old lady healer and she does we we have a video where we tell about the ancient ritual which is practiced all over the balkans actually of lead gossing was it lead gossing krasi the yes when you when yeah. you pour the lead when you pour the lead to remove very ancient mm -hmm. i think thousands of years known tradition of healing, uh, uh, um, especially fears, working on fears. Yes, it's the fear. But it actually, the lead takes the shape of the fear and the, re and the healer looks and says, like, I had it done when I was a child. And the healer looked and said, her grandfather died and he, she got scared. And that's exactly why I was afraid. I thought that he would, I would see him alive again. And <laughs> I was afraid and she could see it and she named the name and everything. So that's, it's incredible. <laughs> and we'll, yeah. we'll go to do that as well. Whoever comes with us, aren't we? Yeah, of course. But the interesting thing is uh, not only the, these ancient monolithic sites that were constructed by men, but also there are some natural um, 
places of wonder, let's call them this way, that we're gonna visit, such as lakes that are actually portals. One of the lakes that we're gonna visit is a, a portal to hell, to the underworld, not to hell, to hell is, no, <laughs> nobody wants to go there, but, and the other one is a portal to heaven. So we're also gonna visit such interesting sites. And um, yeah, the master being Suduno yeah. said in one of the lakes that it was a gate to Agartha. And he said it's invisible, but there are a lot of beings there from Agartha, highly evolved that this is where they pass through to enter. And, and they're quite hard to access those places. Uh, but we're going to have buses and everything organized. There'll be trekking into the mountains and we'll be doing lectures while we we're trekking. We'll sit on the field. We're going to take out our lunches and we're going to talk astrology, prophecies of the future, the upcoming predictions for the world. Uh, we're gonna, Krasi will speak, Krasi, what are you gonna speak about? Yeah, this Wada, yes, um, uh, what we, let, let, let us remind, you know, to the people what we're going to, what is actually the main topic of the astrological conversations. This is the astrology of the era of Aquarius, the astrology of the future and the current times, because things are changing. Of course, astrology remains the most ancient science. Of course, we cannot put the fixed stars somewhere else. They are where they are. But astrology now has different energies. You can read it in a bit different way. Um, with, of course, ap applying the new year of Aquarius. And we, we came up with amazing discoveries related to the contemporary and the future astrology, right? Mm -hmm. So this will be the main, of course, people will see everything on the website. We, we are still upgrading, of course, the, the topics, but the main things are already there. So we'll do every day, me and Krasi, one day together, like a lecture, while we were trekking outside in nature, sometimes in the hotel, everything is included, food, hotels, transportation, just you need to take your ticket. Other will pick you up from the airport, everything is included, uh, and the sleeping, and we'll do every day, like two, three hours lectures of astrology for the future. And Zori will also do for an hour every day, an hour and a half. Zori, can, can you tell people? Sure. So let me first tell you the, the, the title or the topic of the, the whole retreat. It is the New Human Age of Aquarius and Conscious Creation Retreat. So the conscious creation has a lot to do with what, what I'm going to be talking about and consciousness has a lot to do with what you're going to be talking about because the new interpretation of astrology includes more consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be talking about uh, manifestation, defining your goals, your, uh, the, the clear image of yourself. Um, we're going to be talking about the silver method or the more extended version of the silver method that I normally teach, the heal and learn method. So if the weather permits, we're going to have some meditations outside, group meditations. I think it's going to be very cool to connect in nature. Oh, so the I'm excited permits. about that. Mm -hmm. in, in August in Bulgaria, it's usually around 80 degrees and it very rarely rains. So I think we'll be yeah. quite... <clears throat> yeah, 36, 40 Celsius. Yeah, so and we're going to have some astrological observations at night because Crassi is special. Ah, uh, yeah. We can but, watch the sky. Yes, because we'll be in the mountains where it's incredible vision. So one night we're going to go out. Crassi will show us different constellations because she's master of constellations and the visible mm -hmm. astrology. But I want to talk about the peak event that we're going to do. And that's, we're hoping that we'll be there when we organize the group. We'll, we'll be there on... August the 19th at the most sacred place in the in Bulgaria where the master bin Suduno started a hundred years ago organizing uh, panurithmi dances and these are dances of the new uh, uh, the six post-Atlantean human root race each movement is sacred and each movement carries a different meaning and a different uh, it has a different influence on the invisible etheric astral bodies, atomic bodies of the human, uh, the different human layers, you know, of the soul, of the spirit. Absolutely every, every single movement that he gave in this dance, and it's very easy actually, uh, develops a different moral and spiritual part of the invisible body of the human, preparing the humans for the higher consciousness and preparing humans for the... Uh, supernatural abilities that uh, rightfully uh, that we have a right <laughs> and we're naturally going to evolve into 
and he advises that this dance is danced especially on a very special day on the day of the rising of Sirius on the 19th of August this is the day that the white brotherhood it's called it's not racial white brotherhood no it's white <laughs> souls a gathering he says every year when Sirius rises the invisible ascended masters of the white brotherhood that take care of humanity that protect humanity that decide the future of humanity gather and they have like a conference let's say in the invisible world on this day and they decide the next 12 months and the future how it's going to develop for humanity and he said this is the most sacred and spiritual day of the year the 19th of august when sirius rises every year and we're going to be there to watch sirius rising and to dance the sacred dance of panurithmi behind the mountains 5,000 people usually go every year. This year, we don't know because of the restrictions. But in Bulgaria, currently, there are no restrictions for traveling. And we think it will be even less so in the summer, maybe just a PCR test. But we're going to be there uh, in the mountains with usually the 5,000 people all dressed in white. Very simple dance. Uh, and this dance has very healing uh, and... Um, uh, very healing influence let's say like that we'll explain you more while we're there so this is one of the things i'm very excited about can you tell us more about that well that i wanted to add something just very simple but very very important especially for your channel because many people understand a lot from astrology which are watching us this is actually the panorhythmic dance is playing out the zodiac there is even one uh, exercise which is called squ square which means that you when you have difficult square in your horoscope only by dancing panarhythmic dance you are easing up the square the difficult aspects in your horoscope and also the master being saduno uh, has taken the this dance directly from heaven and i know from a person who is uh, always going up in the in the mountains to and she, she told me that she saw, because she is a medium, she goes there just because she was seeing the angels dancing, panarhythmic dance in the Riwa mountains. So, and Ben Saduno was telling the same. He took actually these exercises and the music, copied it down from, from heaven. I know that a hundred years ago, his students were walking in the mountain. He would take them all the time because he had mountains. He said mountains are the most sacred places that uplift the vibration the most. And they were walking and a group of them saw the dance in the air of angels dancing. So I guess mediums continue to see that. And, yeah. and Bin Saduna said, I will give you the steps and I'll give you the music. And he gave it over, uh, over the next year. So now uh, they're dancing it, people are dancing it every morning in some countries. Uh, it's all over the world where people are g gathering together and doing this dance to harmonize, to heal, to spiritually evolve. Uh, it's, it's like a dancing meditation, basically. Very simple. You don't need to know it. It's, it's just you walk with the whole group and you do the movement. From day one, you, you just follow what the steps and you do it. You don't even... Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hope we can go. I hope it, we can gather a group of 10, 15, 20 people, whoever comes. 12 people, need, you need to have a group of 12 because of the Zodiac. 12 people minimum in order to dance the panavritmi. Oh yeah, but they're usually 5,000 people that dance. Oh yeah, I know, I know. They're, but I, just the minimum, the minimum number. Yeah. Yeah, I just hope we can make this happen. I hope we can make this retreat happen. I hope because of the restrictions, currently a lot of people are worried to travel, but um, you know, um, whoever is brave enough to come, if we have a group of 10 or more, we're going to go ahead and do it. So you can check the link and can i ask you there will be another lecturer there can you tell us a bit about him uh, he's uh, uh, he, well um there's somebody that um that still needs to be confirmed but there's somebody who is going to be our guide who is going to give a short lecture on um on the it's called an ordinance basically and this is what i've made a short video that you can attach at the end of this video where he explains what an ordinance is so what he's actually going to do is he's uh, going to he's a professional mountain guide so he's going to take us to these sacred sites and maybe tell us a few stories about the sites and um whoever is willing may order in addition um 
uh, uh, such an ordinance from him because um, this, the there are different types of ordinances. There are the rituals, yes. So there are different types of ordinances, and the one that is like um, his newest addition uh, is a, a finding of your love uh, soulmate. So, so they're like so so ceremonies and rituals that you do based on ancient ancient Bulgarian uh, uh, traditions that they'll do uh, for thousands of years, yeah? Not really. Um, these are Vedic, but not Vedic uh, as in Indian Vedic astrology traditions, but Vedic as explained in the book of Anastasia, of the Vedic culture. So this Vedic culture was actually um, uh, present all over the world, not only in Russia and Bulgaria, but there were people that lived such a life Ten thousand, about ten thousand years ago. We don't really know how yeah, long ago. I remember Anastasia said it was around ten thousand years ago. This culture that was incredible. There was so high consciousness, and everything they did had a spiritual meaning and a practical meaning. They never did things, you know, just for looks or just for kicks. Mm. Or, <laughs> and that's why it's different from a ritual because everything is very well coordinated and calculated within the principles of nature even astrology wow. and that that the person that guy he's also a high level uh, occult master isn't he spiritual exorcist master. you don't have exorcist. To <laughs> a real exorcist yeah Ab yes. amazing this is not the catholic meaning of exorcism this is really beautiful natural science exorcism uh, he can, in the most pure, natural uh, way, uh, exercised exorcism. He, he can see entities, positive light, yes. dark, and he yes. can reason yeah. with them. And... I know him for many, many years. He's been a friend and amazing. He lives life of purity. He lives like in, in the forest, high mm -hmm. in the mountain also. But, uh, and he lives without television in the nature and I, uh, I there are so many interesting you know stories uh, with him but yeah he's uh, he naturally became a shaman actually he shaman or shaman, he actually he's, he has a phd in philosophy is very educated guy who is not interested actually in the in the civil civilized life he lives very life of purity yeah well yeah i remember i talked with him because I needed him, his help. I haven't seen him, but we wrote a few emails. And he said, I don't, don't take money, please. I, but, you know, I would make a donation, of course, or something. But he's, he's spirit told him, no money, anything. But he'll do lectures for us. And he'll be our guy. Yes. I can't wait to meet that guy. He sounds like something out of this world. <laughs> like a modern day saint. <laughs> so I think it will be so amazing. I, I really, the food is included mornings and evenings in the hotel that we are every day we take we we go on a bus and we go in different places you can check out which places we're going to be visiting it's going to be mountains nature and a little bit of society as well because we're in a quite pleasant uh, a mountain city a pretty pretty little mountain city uh, with a lot of restaurants, with very good quality restaurants, food and nightlife as well. And not expensive, very reasonable. Very reasonable. Bulgaria, uh, five dollars and you, you have a three-course meal. <laughs> well, that, that's actually, uh, it's not any longer such a small village. It used to be a small village about 20 years ago, but at the moment it's the, the place where the European ski cups are held sometimes. So last year, uh, the, the the European ski cup was held in Bansko. Oh, okay. Oh. And it's full of beautiful hotels, and it's actually a very beautiful mountain resort. It's it's quite uh, high level. I know that all the hotels have mm -hmm. spas, and there are a lot of five star hotels. So, yeah, we, we're gonna have this hotel too. It's a beautiful closed hotel, like a tiny village hotel area. The one that we booked. Yeah, uh, very right. very nice. With swimming pools and outside, yeah. very warm. Restaurants, everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think the most important thing is yes, we're gonna talk amazing things. We're gonna see amazing things. We're gonna bond and become friends. That's what it's like. We're gonna form a little a hub of friendship. I really hope we can make it happen this year. We have everything organized. It depends if enough people sign up to come. 
And uh, I'm sure that when all those restrictions fall down, if they ever do, who knows, <laughs> that uh, we'll have at least a group of 60 people <laughs> or something because it's, uh, but for now it's the beginning of this adventure. So if you join us, it will be way more intimate and personal uh, this first year. So in August, you can check the link below. And now we're going also to attach to this video, a 13 minute discussion from that shaman that we told you about, who talks about ordinances. He speaks in English, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's a perfect English. That will yeah. be our guide. And also he'll talk about certain lectures about those magical rituals, ordinances uh, from the Vedic ancient culture of 10,000 years ago that was all over the world. Uh, so yeah, so you can meet the whole team. Thank you. So Maybe much. one thing we didn't mention is the length of the whole um, oh, retreat. Yeah. Oh. It's going to be six days. So six nights, basically seven days with arranged transportation from Sofia to Bansko and everywhere we go as well. Awesome. So everything is taken care of unless you, you are hungry during daytime. You can get like a sandwich, everything is cheap in Bulgaria, but we'll be usually in the mountains somewhere. And uh, I would advise whoever comes that they stay another week and go to the seaside. Because for me, my most favorite part of Bulgaria is the beaches <laughs> and the seaside. So, whoever Not to mention that the seaside in Bulgaria is very special because in Varna, for example, you have such ancient places and tra Tracian uh, sites and also in Varna the first the most ancient gold was discovered in Varna in Bulgaria people can even can see it. So the mm. oldest gold in the world so the basically the oldest civilization in the world that has existed that civilized and cultured from 7,000 years before Christ or 10,000 yeah. I've actually been to this museum where they show 10,000 year old gold Wow. Necklaces so, and decoration. It's like pharaohs, basically. Very interesting stuff. So the, the first civilizations in the world were there, around the Black Sea, basically, because it was a sweet salt, it was a sweet lake. The first Hermes, the first Hermes lived From there. Technology, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. There's some very ancient place. It, uh, every time I... I'm crossing the boundary into the Balkans with the plane, I feel a wave. It's like hits me from below and immediately I get so much energy. And the moment I land there, I'm like pumping all the time. <laughs> it's very... Oh, and the climate, since you say energy, it's, let's say about the climate, beautiful climate in Bulgaria. We have four uh, distinctive seasons, four. You, you can really, uh, it, it's enjoyable, lovely. The energy is, you can't describe it. Okay. Thank you so much, Carol. <laughs> Thank you for organizing we are, this. And we are going for sure. <laughs> we're going, we are going. <laughs> I hope so. We're going to let leave you with a recording of an ordinance that uh, our guy who is talking about, who's going to be taking us, the shaman, high level occultist, and healer. Uh, and then you can check the website and see the places we'll be going. Krasi and Zori keep adding pictures of those places. There is a link below. And if you want to register, write to us or uh, you can buy your, um, you can uh, buy your place, uh, but we'll ask you to wait before buying a ticket till we gather the whole group. And once we have a number, the number that we need, you can buy tickets. So that's, you know, so we make sure, you know, people don't, <laughs> because we might refund the money for some of you if, if you know, for, uh, if it doesn't happen. But we're praying it does. So. <laughs> yeah. For now, no restrictions in Bulgaria. Quite, quite okay with the pandemic. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and we we'll leave you to listen to the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Zori. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I have the pleasure to present to you Ross and Angelouf. This is the man who is going to uh, guide us to the sacred sites during our retreat this summer. Um, and he has some very special gifts. I'd like to introduce him to you because you might consider uh, what he can do for your love life. Uh, before I give him the word, uh, a brief introduction. As per his own words, he is a man, a son, a brother, a father, a healer, a teacher, a leader, 
a writer, an organizer, a trainer, a mountain guide, an instructor, a gardener. So welcome, Rosen. Glad to have you. Hello, everybody. Hello, Zurina. Thank you <laughs> for presenting me in such good, awesome way. So apart from all these things, uh, just for the people who still care about um, uh, certifications, you're also a PhD in social sciences. You're a philosopher, psychologist. Um, and I had the pleasure to meet you in person last summer when Krasi introduced us. Uh, and you told us very cool things about the construction of the world, about um, certain energies, how they interact with the humans, about colors, basically how everything interacts with everything. It was fascinating. Um, and this was the pinnacle of our trip back then with Krasi in the summer. Um, so what I'd like to ask you now is to explain about the rituals you perform, because you also did a ritual back then for me in the summer. And these are not really rituals. I don't even know how to translate them exactly in English. It's something like an ordinance, giving an order to the invisible world. So how would you define them? I haven't much more to add because you explained the essence of this action full of Asian spirituality and pure thoughts of my soul, of the soul, of the general self of my gene, my native people, the Bulgarians. And this is all tradition, maybe from 10,000 years, that was given to me by invisible way when I was uh, in very big trouble nine years ago. And I started uh, to exorce, to be exorcist, to delete the evil immaterially, materially, visible, visibly, invisibly. And after that, all my obret, the Bulgarian word is obret. The meaning, the sense of this word is a very good, very well explained by you just now. What I'm going the ordinance to, to I yes. know it, it means the to um, ordering, it, ordering of of a new to declare a new order, to yes, enact of a new, a new order. spiritual uh, order in the life of the specific person and his family, and in all dimensions and specifically in his health, soul health, body health, um, etc. Mm -hmm. So you have now um, just received um, through the same methods as you usually receive information about these ordinances, uh, a new, more advanced version of the love, let's call it an ordinance because ritual is clearly not the right word, um, in which one can attract their soulmate, somebody that is a perfect fit to their um, to their everything, I suppose, to the rhythm of their heart, to the values they have. So, what does this what does this do exactly? This ordinance, how mm. does it work? Mm -hmm. It's like a surgery, a spiritual and emotional surgery that cuts, that is cutting the objective obstacle, the karma, karma obstacles on the way to attracting, to see, to look at, to understand, to declare, to describe to feel it, the so-called soulmate or love half. But the first one, um, before this kind of surgery of this operation, um, must be a description of a full love image. Because the most of the people now according to my view, according to my practice, is programmed not to believe in 
the eternal love. Um, but the soulmate, the love half, is created by God, not by the TV, not by Hollywood, not by science, not by religion, not by our parents. It's created from the beginning of my soul, of your soul, of your souls. And if we don't believe in this, any surgery is, alas, unnecessary. I just upgrade after your full, complete, whole love image. If I feel that you believe in the eternal love. So what do you do then, specifically? <laughs> in my same place, I can't, I'm, I, I can't say where is it, but I mm -hmm. have a same place. Sacred, old, like a sacred, yes, your own sacred. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Uh, the Bulgarian word is svetilište, lighting place. Mm -hmm. Svetilište. In my saint, my um, secret place, I'm doing a uh, very interesting natural order and orders to the invisible forces. I don't pray. I don't pray. I order the so new. How is this different from magic? Somebody would ask. And pure heart is the difference. My pure heart, the pure heart of the woman or the man who has ordered my obret. Mm -hmm. This is the difference. Our um, acquaintance, our negotiations, um, which is voluntarily negotiated. Mm -hmm. This is with the knowledge, with the agreement of this person, not behind his back. This is the difference, the consciousness. Mm -hmm. I see. And so th there's a process where somebody consults with you first, and then after you clear everything up about the image they're creating or the, the image that the true image that they hold in their hearts, then you start with the obret or the ordinance. Yes. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, because the obret uh, will be half resulted, resultive, if mm -hmm. uh, the participant on the other side, my client or my patient, um, isn't working on this image uh, sincerely, if uh, she or he is waiting all the work to be done by me, it will be with a very short duration. If we want to make something for the eternity, we must work together as a team, spiritual team. Mm -hmm. So how long does it usually take for such an obra to give effect? How long does it take for the other half to show up in the life of your, mm. of your client? Marina, uh, it depends. It depends. It could be two days. It could be in the same day. Or, but it could be after two years. Mm -hmm. It depends from the depth of our, and purity of our belief. Mm -hmm. And so with the other uh, obras that you have done so far, with the exorcist, exorcism and with the health um, obret, um, how much time lapse was in between the time you did it and the effect? No I'm time. Actually, no I mean, time. No time. It, so works, immediate. it works uh, immediately. When, oh, wow. I delete, I, mm -hmm. when I delete demons, mm -hmm. devils, all the hell... Mm, creatures mm -hmm. it works immediately mm -hmm. i see well i have i'm gonna share a 
uh, personal story here from what you did for me in the summer. So I asked you to um, to perform this exorcist um, uh, ordinance on behalf of my dad or for my dad. And you actually did it for my whole family. But what happened was very interesting afterwards. Uh, so my dad had been suffering from teeth problems for quite a while. And uh, he was a month after uh, you did the ritual, he underwent a surgical procedure where he got uh, his bottom teeth replaced with um, implants. So this prevented him from properly chewing his food and he couldn't eat. He like literally couldn't eat properly. Um, they, they did also didn't put any substitution of teeth in the meantime while everything was healing. And so in this process, his stomach started deteriorating and he started puking um, every time he would take in food. Um, but at the same time, I mean, as bad as this sounds, at the same time, this helped him a lot um, to stop with his drinking habit because he had been suffering from this for a very long time. So while something seemed very bad in the first glance, it actually helped him. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you are, I thank you, Zurina, for your faith, your belief, and your confidence, uh, and your strength. Uh, you are explaining very well the contradiction which all of us must overcome. The first come deterioration, but it is seeming one. It is preparation. You mean deterioration? Yes, deterioration. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a seeming one because this is a preparation for good change. Mm -hmm. We must disturb the older, the old, old order. Mm -hmm. We must destroy it to transform it in a good one. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rosen. I am really eager for uh, for our retreat in the summer and if anybody wants to find you and wants to find out more about uh, the ordinance the love ritual that you're doing how can they find you by my email filmet klomba mail begin great thank you thank you too zurina thank you all <laughs>